Growing up, I loved to ask people questions. And one of my favorite questions to ask people was, if you found a genie with three wishes, what would you wish for? Now, I didn't really care how the person responded. I only cared about them asking the same question back to me. So it went a little something like this. I don't really know, man. I might wish for some money or to fix this problem I'm having or maybe a superpower. I haven't really put much thought into that. What about you? What would, what would you wish for? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. See, if I found a genie with three wishes, I would wish for a bunch of money maybe. I don't really care the first two. The last wish though, I'd wish for another genie because it gets around the whole rule of you can't wish for more wishes. I'm just wishing for another genie. So as you can tell, I'm so competitive that I didn't really care how the people responded. I just wanted to beat them at my own game to respond better to my own question and while I'm over here trying to respond better to my own question Jesus is asking you a question that your answer your response to this question can change your life so in the first book of John we see Jesus ask what do you want it's the first thing that he says in the entire book so just just imagine the God of the universe, the God that breathed light into the world, the God that holds the world in the palm of his hand, the God that created you comes down from heaven just to ask you, what do you want? You see, I would go to church every Sunday, but by Monday, I didn't really want God looking at me anymore. Because while I always looked good on the outside, I had this problem going on on the inside. And... It was a problem of trying to find joy and fulfillment in, in other things, in these things that were around me, like my grades. So, I was, you know, one semester I was like, man, if I could just get straight A's, like, I'd be so happy. Or, you know, man, if I could just be the, the most popular in the school, I'd be so happy. Or even with girls and messing around and doing stuff, like, I would, I would go and I would do that. And it was because I was just trying to not think about what problem was really there. It really drove me to this place where I didn't know where my fulfillment was. And, you know, I always looked happy, but it was, I was hurting on the inside. And it was because I was trying to be fulfilled by things of this world. But what I started to learn is that's never going to work. Because once I get a certain grade, I just want a better grade. But once I have so many friends, I just want more friends. But once I do this, I just want to do that. That's why these people that are billionaires won't retire. They always want more money. And it's because of it's because of this. In John chapter one, in John chapter one, verse three, it says, Through him, Jesus, all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. So let me explain that to you. God created the heavens and the earth, right? And he created you for a purpose, to be fulfilled by God, because you were created through God, and He loves you, but God is perfect, and since I'm definitely not perfect, but God loves, loves me, and He wants to be with me, he had, to, he had to take away my imperfection, because if God just forgot about it, then you'd still have that imperfection inside of me, He had to get payment for it. So it just says, evil entered the world through one person. All evil can be destroyed by one person. So God stepped down from throne, his throne and became a man. And he paid the price for me. And all I have to do is accept that. And he, it, he fulfills me. Now, let me, let me show you something about God. Is that while you're fulfilled and you're satisfied with knowing him you always want to know more about him you always want to find a deeper relationship with him once you realize that he fulfilled you so it gives you this eternal fulfillment for the rest of your life and then after you die you'll get to be with him in heaven you'll be eternally forever fulfilled by god so you don't have to be like me and searching for all these things to fulfill you until you're driven to that dark place. So if you want this fulfillment by God, if you want to be brought from death to life, then all you have to do is pray this prayer. This prayer goes a little, 
and I'm going to pray it with you. So if you want Jesus, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, to fulfill you today, then just pray this prayer with me. Father God, I know I'm not perfect, and I know I'm an evil person, and I know I have this darkness in my life. But God, I, I know that you died for me so you could take this darkness away from me and so that I can be with you. And I accept your gift of salvation. I accept your gift of freedom for me. Thank you, God, for what you did for me. And in your name I pray. Amen. So if you just pray that prayer with me, then Jesus has stepped into your life. And through the series I'm going to do here on my YouTube channel, I'm going to show you how to live with Jesus in your everyday life. Next week, I'm going to talk about going into the wilderness of your life. So come back for more.